Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we're saying goodbye to the big sunspots up north. We'll describe the minor solar storm that is due at Earth tomorrow. Then we have five links to explore, including three terrific new studies. Let's get started, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star and first notice top right, that filament that caught the CME days ago. It has finally moved on. If you were here, you watched it potentially save our planet. Goodbye and thank you. After that, we have the coronal hole on the north, and that's the only imminent space weather news. The solar wind is expected to arrive in 12 to 36 hours from this show and deliver low-level geomagnetic storms. The CME released by yesterday's X-Class solar flare did have a full halo component, but also... That was just the sparse outer shell, and it has almost certainly been absorbed into that coronal hole stream. Minor storm conditions and high-latitude auroras on deck to end the weekend. Folks, we've got new James Webb shots of the Sagittarius B2 cloud. Neary and Meerkam putting in work here. Gorgeous looks we honestly couldn't have dreamt of getting before this telescope was launched. Up next... Folks, it is going to be a La Nina couple of months. With winter settling in up north, the normal La Nina patterns are going to be in play. It's notable that the snow droughts in the north and southern Rockies do often lead to regular droughts and wildfire spikes. First article today is a thesis on solar storm impact to trees. It disrupts their own circadian rhythm proportionally to the ground voltage induced by the solar storm. While we look up at the aurora, the trees feel down. Splendid bit here on a new microtectite field in Australia. This one doesn't match previous ones and has wildly exotic chemistry by comparison. Of course, they are looking at impactor creation because they are mainstream scientists, but the exotic composition is what makes an observer ask if those are some of the sampling from previous micronova events. Lastly, on the article front, outstanding paper here that not only suggests that the Arctic was fully ice covered during the glacial cycle, which ties back to our argument about the mammoths and what they actually mean, but also the deglaciation heating that created a warmer early to mid Holocene than today, about 10 to 7,000 years ago. Yes, that's right. Hotter than now, up out of the ice age, no SUVs. Folks, the next issue of our e-magazine comes out today. We'll run through some of the top issues in the issue here. As we tell you, it is the only publication on Earth tracking the disaster cycle, solar forcing of various kinds, and the magnetic pole shift. Right now, for $6, you can join, get today's special issue, and instant access to the entire library of past issues probably close to a thousand pages of selected observer science. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.